Hey gang, it's Lawrence Shinoors, and uh, we're in downtown Greenville, Illinois. I just love a town with a square in it. Don't you? I, I, something about it, you know, it's an old time town. I love it. We've that come down to the Greenville today, the car show. They had 137 cars at this show. And I don't want to brag, but I'll say the old mock got a top 40, so I'm pretty happy. But you know how I like looking at other cars? How often do you see one of these? that you ain't riding in the back of. My friend Jim here collects these things. And Jim come today, and uh, why don't you tell us about this, how you got a hold of it? Because it's not, what's the legality of having this? Well, first of all, it's a 1977 Grand Fury. It's registered through the state of Illinois as an antique vehicle. In the state of Illinois, if you have an antique vehicle registered as such, you can put plates that are year specific to your vehicle on the car as long as you carry the license plates, the antique plates, and registration in the vehicle to be presentable upon demand by an officer. If it's registered as an antique vehicle, nothing as far as the word police or the lights need to be covered. Whereas if it's newer than an antique vehicle, you can still drive the car, but you have to cover up all the stuff that would make it illegal otherwise. So that's one of the benefits of the antique plates for these old cars. This, like I said, is a 1977 Plymouth Grand Fury. It started life as a car coming down the line to be built as a detective car for a California police agency. The order was canceled for all their cars, and the car was shipped over onto the civilian line. When it came off the civilian line and was sold out, it was sold to an older couple in South Dakota. Springfield found out about it, bought it from them, brought it back, drove it back to Springfield. The car had just a little over 50,000 original miles on it. He had it painted white and was going to be making it into a bicentennial version of the police car that they had in 1976. He needed some money, he sold the car and some other stuff to me, and I turned it into the more commonly marked state police car that you see here. So it is a police vehicle with 140 mile an hour certified speedometer and it just never actually got to see police service which probably saved its life because uh, it's quite a little runner and it's still young at only 50,000 miles on the odometer. Yeah, you're talking about these, you know, you're an ex-police officer. But, uh, I think it's really neat. You got a lot of equipment here, you know, pertaining to And you just go someplace and, I mean, how do people get that stuff where you can buy it? I found some of it in the old police department garage before they tore it down in Springfield. They had stuff that they weren't going to use. It was old, outdated. Rather than haul it to their new building, they just left it where it was. security 
Well, wherever the governor would go, he had a briefcase and he carried an extra set of plates for a state trooper car. I think that was nice. And he had a governor number one plate that he that's, carried that's with him. Really nice. So any car that they would get in, they put this governor number one plate on. He knew I was a collector, so he gave me the set of brand new plates that you see here when they expired. Never been on a car, and he gave me the governor number one plate also. This is the first time those plates have ever been on a vehicle, is on this one here. Yeah, this plane's clean. Well, like I said, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming to the show. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we'll catch you somewhere else. Oh, I'll be around. Okay, I'll be around. Everybody, we'll catch up with you later. All I'm going to say is uh, shine on.